Can't What's barely. in behind my head? Is that my hair? This? Yeah. That's your hair. Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. It's, it's been a long time since we've made a video. And what prompted this one is, it's uh, that time of year again to plant seeds. So we'll get into that here in a minute, but uh, you know, life's just been super busy for us. Um, it's probably been what, October since we made a video? Oh, it's or been a while, November, yeah. November, something like that? It's been a while. And in that time, we've gone over a thousand subscribers, which to me is like insane. It's awesome. And uh, it's exciting. I, uh, yeah, I know a lot of big, uh, YouTube channels and YouTubers are like a thousand, eh, whatever. But to us, that means a lot. It means like there's over a thousand of you out there that don't mind spending a few minutes with us and <laughs> making crazy, you know, fun videos that at least we find entertaining. And uh, again, thank you. Thank you very much. It means a lot to both of us. It does. So, like I said earlier, it's that time of year again. And we are going to go inside here and we're going to start planting seeds. If we plant them now, they'll give us about 10 weeks until the last frost here. We're in like Southwest Ohio, and last frost is around May 15th, right in that area. And it'll be about 10 weeks. And that's about what we want. Uh, it should give the plants enough time to get mature enough to be able to go outside. And of course, we'll do the hardening off and all that stuff. But let's go inside here, and uh, we'll show you what we do. We keep it really basic. I think everything that I buy is local, like Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, and stuff, stuff like that. Um, I like to get stuff that anybody can get pretty much anywhere. Make it easy. Let's go inside and get started. We are back inside. Like I said, outside. I keep everything pretty basic. Uh, everything here I got from uh, like your local places. Like like I said, outside, Home Depot, those, all that stuff. Except for this. This and the dome that goes with it. These are from Bootstrap Farmer. And the tray is a standard, uh, I think they call them 10, 10, 20 trays. Let me make sure here. 20, 10, yeah, this, this is a standard 10, 20 tray. And they call them that because they're 20 inches by 10 inches. These are very heavy duty though. They're not the, not the ones you would get, you know, like at a garden center, you know, or a, a big box store. These are like super heavy duty. I don't know how many years have I had these? Two or three? It's been a while. Yeah, and I like these because they're heavy duty and because I can throw them in the, uh, the dishwasher and put it on sanitize. Yeah, it withstands the heat. It doesn't warp real bad or anything like that. I like to sanitize them every year before I use them just in case there's any bacteria or mold or fungus or something like that on these. It gets them hot enough to where it sanitizes and washes them clean. These are just standard cell trays here. Seed trays, seed cell trays, six cell trays, whatever you call them. And uh, I got these, I think, you know where I got these? Like Amazon. Were these, were these Amazon? These might have been Amazon. I picked them up at like garden centers and Lowe's before, but those aren't, they're real super thin. Um, you can get them and they're fine. Actually, they're a little bit easier because those you can just break out real easy. These are a little bit tougher. And they'll just line up in here. But uh, I have a very small urban garden, and I'm only going to have about 18 variety of peppers, maybe 20, 22 at the most. Again, we're going to be real basic here. I'm going to fill these full of uh, seed starting mix. And I personally like the miracle Grow seed starting mix. Generally, seed starting mixes you buy are sterile. Uh, people can get, you know, uh, soil, uh, potting soil, stuff like that, and that's fine too. But I like that extra peace of mind with the sterilized seed starting mixes. I'm going to show you how we use this in a minute. My wife is over here labeling the uh, markers, plant markers. And these are pretty standard plant markers too. Uh, I don't even know how big they are to be honest with you. But we just need them to fit inside here and identify what cell, you know, what seed is in what cell. While she's doing that, I'm going to mix up some uh, seed starting mix here and I'll show you how we do that. It's pretty basic stuff, and there are a million ways to do this. Uh, well, not mix it up, but to plant seeds, but I keep it real simple, real basic. It seems to work out okay. We're over here at the sink. I already have an open bag right here, and let's dump some in here. 
What's nice about this too is it also has uh, perlite in it already. It's not much, but it'll do. If you want to, you can add more, but usually I just leave it like it is. All we're gonna do now is add a little bit of water. You don't want to add too much water. You want it moist, but not saturated. What I mean by that, here, let me mix it up a little bit, is if I, if I can squeeze this with my hand, I don't want to crush it, you know, like hulk it, and I can let it go and it stays together, that's good enough. See how it's falling apart right now? That means there's not enough water in here. If I squeeze it, if I squeeze it, it just falls out of my hand. That's not what I want. So I'm gonna add a little more water and get it a little more saturated. All right, now that I've thoroughly made a mess, I'm gonna grab a handful, squeeze it, and let it go. See how it stays in a clump like this? That's what I want. If I squeeze it and water comes pouring out between my fingers and stuff, that is too saturated. Let's go back over to the table and start filling some seed trays. We're gonna start filling these seed cells up. I'm not gonna put just one per cell. I'm gonna put three of the same type per cell. Okay. Maybe even four. And the reason for that is, uh, in case one of them doesn't decide to uh, cooperate, doesn't sprout or dies for whatever reason, we'll have a couple more for backup. Fill these up and compress them slightly and I'll show you that. I'm not gonna pack them tight. I'm just gonna slightly compress them. I don't wanna pack it tight because that may uh, inhibit the seed from sprouting. It may get stuck under the surf surface of the soil or something like that, and we don't want that. That's always bad. Just enough where you can feel a little bit of resistance on your thumb. And this video is not meant for your advanced, or maybe even your intermediate gardeners. Um, I myself am not an advanced gardener. But uh, actually doing this, and we have the lights set up and everything else, but it's only been, this is like the third year. So that's about where we want it, right there. Like I said, just slightly packed down to where I can feel resistance on my thumb. I don't want to smash them and cram them in there. So you advanced gardeners out there, uh, if you have any uh, tips, tricks, comments, put them in the uh, you know, comments below. Any uh, Anything's appreciated, as long as it's friendly. <laughs> And uh, we're all here to just help each other out. And I'm going to finish filling these up. And we'll come back to you when we're ready to uh, start putting seeds in here. And I'll show you how we do that. We put three in each cell. If I can get them out. She'll space them kind of evenly so when they do sprout they won't be all bunched together. Then you lightly cover them back up. About an eighth of an inch under the surface is all you really need. Pack it just a little. And then tag it. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to do that uh, for the rest of these uh, 17 other varieties. When we're done with that, we'll come back and uh, we'll move on to the next step. And there's a million different ways to do this. Some people will soak these in different kinds of tea or just water or whatever to soften up the shell of the uh, seed so it can sprout easily. But I've not had much luck with that. I've done it once and actually it didn't turn out as well as just doing this, to be honest. And maybe that's something I did. Some people swear by it and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you do that, let me know how you do it in the comments and maybe I'll try it uh, maybe next year or something. Anyway, we'll get these filled up and move on to the next step. All the seed cells are filled with seeds. Uh, the lovely uh, Miss Blazing Pepper is bringing the tray in. We're going to set it on this heat mat here. And typically uh, we'll put about a, two cups of water in there with them for the moisture. You can add a little more or a little less. Depends on how you feel and how it looks because we want them to be Right up in that area, like about an eighth of an inch above the bottom of that thing. That's just me, though. As far as the heat mat goes, 
I've been using this right here. And I don't know if you, don't know if you can see it or not. It's kind of dark up there. But it controls the temperature. I'm going to put this probe into one of the trays here. Probably right there. When it gets too hot, it'll uh, shut off the heat mat. If it's too cold, it'll turn it on. I'll have my lovely assistant put the uh, tray on there, the humidity dome. And for now, we're going to close these vents off. Because we want as much humidity as we can get. We're going to keep a nice, warm, and moist environment in there. I'll run my probe through one of these holes into that empty seed cell, and uh, everything's good to go. Hey, once again, thank you for sticking with us. Um, now that the seed uh, growing time, hopefully we'll get more videos out. And not hopefully, we are going to get more videos out. She's been uh, on my case about it, and I just been real bad. We've had we've been real busy, and uh, thanks again for sticking with us, everybody. And we'll see you on the next one. Say bye, dear. Bye.